I'm grateful once again to be able to stand before you today to deliver this short lesson, to offer any kind of, or an, an invitation to those who might need. If you would, let's all be turning to Romans chapter 3. When you listen to many folks around you, co-workers, people on the news, people on various videos out in public, you hear a common cry. Specifically nowadays, it's a cry for equality. We all want equality. While many of those different ideas and doctrines are error, it's not at all the purpose of these next few moments to attempt to refute them. I just want to think about the idea of equality for a few moments. In Romans chapter 3, beginning in verse 21, we're told that the righteousness of God comes without the law of Moses, outside of it. And it's been made plain, it's been witnessed by the law and the prophets. And this righteousness of God comes through a certain thing. And that is the faith of Jesus Christ. Now this comes to everyone. This grace, this offering of salvation, this righteousness from God is offered to everyone. But in verse 22 it says, Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. So there is a certain level of equality as far as what he's addressing at this moment. What's this type of equality, though, that he's talking about? Well, verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So in a sense, we're all equal, because at some point in our lives we have sinned. And certainly it's very easy to look around in our public. It's full of sinners. It's the world. What else do you expect? But all are equal. If for no other reason because we've all sinned. And come short of the glory of God. However, verse 24 says that there is a grace through the redemption of Christ that has appeared to all men. We know this is further referenced by Titus chapter 2, verse 11. This grace has appeared unto all men. But all these who have sinned have the opportunity to be justified. That is, to be made innocent, uh, to be made meet or suitable, to be made righteous, to be made holy. And God does this, has done this, by His Son, Jesus the Christ. Verse, 20, verse 25 says that he's the propitiation. That's a very big word that just simply means that Jesus was the price that adequately satisfied the payment that God required for our sins. For our being equal as sinners. Now verse 26 it says, To declare, I say, at this time, His righteousness, that He might be just. Speaking of God, He is just. He's also the justifier of Him, which believeth in Jesus. So we have further solidified the way that we become justified. So not only is God just, but He has the ability to justify others. And this is done by faith in His Son, Jesus the Christ. Verse 27 says, Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Thus we're contrasting the law of Moses, the Old Testament doctrine, against the law of Christ, the law of faith. We can see this in Romans chapter 2, verses 17 and verse 23 as well. He goes on, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified 
by faith without the deeds of the law. Again, the Old Testament. Verse 29. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. So we see that we begin as equals to our peers because of the sins that we willingly commit. And when one obeys the gospel, now they're unequal to those around them. However, God is able to make that believer, that obedient convert, equal to all others who have taken the same steps to be saved, who have followed His law, His plan of salvation for mankind. And He's not just the God of the Jews. I'm thankful for that because I'm a Gentile. And I think there's a whole host of others that are Gentiles as well. Thankfully, He's the God of us as well because He's able to justify both Jew and Gentile. And He has done so. And will continue to do so as long as he allows time in the flesh to continue. Now verse 30 points out an interesting aspect. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. So the one God is able to justify both Jew and Gentile and make one new type of individual. That is, one group of justified. We know this is the church, the body of Christ, the body that Jesus shed His precious blood for. Each member of that body is no longer equal to those in and of the world. Instead, they're equal to every other person who has been properly justified by the blood of Christ has been justified by God. So the one God is able to make one people. Now if this is a subject or a concept that is interesting to you, by that we mean if you're not a Christian, again, everybody around us is crying for equality. And in many instances, they already have it. They're all equally sinners. And at one point, we started out as that when we freely gave up the way of righteousness. We chose to sin against God. We typically refer to that as the age of accountability. We begin as innocence, and by our own will, we choose to sin. And now, by and large, we're equal with those of the world. But through proper teaching, specifically from the Scriptures, we can be unequally are unequal with those around us because obeying God makes us unequal, sets us free from the bondage of sin, Romans 6, and we're now equal with those who have obeyed the law of Christ. Now, if you are not a Christian and you would like true equality, true equality only comes through obeying Christ and His gospel. God is able to justify us he has justified every convert who has followed his plan for salvation. If you've not a, become a Christian this afternoon, why not become justified? Why not become equal with all others who have been holy, been made holy? And as a Christian, maybe you've allowed sin back into your life. Maybe you have become unequal with your brethren. Maybe you've slipped back into the world. Why not take this time as together we stand and sing to make those things right before your God and become a child of God, a God but righteous in His sight again?